So today I'm going to be talking about how to take a good photo taken straight from your camera and turn it into a great photo using Photoshop. Hello and welcome to another Kelty Media video by me. Now you may be wondering why I am doing a tutorial on photography when I am predominantly a videographer or filmmaker. Now photography and videography do go hand in hand. For example you can use photos in a lot of your video productions, you can use them to show snapshots to your clients, but most importantly for me you can use them as thumbnails for your videos. Thumbnails are the first thing that people will see before deciding to click on your video. So in many cases, it is the deciding factor on whether or not they will go ahead and click on your video. So photography for me is a big part. So here you can see the photo straight out of the camera versus how it looks now. Starting at the beginning, I uploaded the raw file from my camera into Photoshop. When doing this, I recommend holding the shift option and then clicking smart object as that gives you more flexibility when you're working with raw files. When we have that in Photoshop, we want to dive straight in and adjust the colors. The way I edited this picture was a sort of quick and easy way of doing things. We want to separate the car from the background, right? So I went to the polygonal select tool and I made a shape around the car. Once I had a nice shape of it, I went to the camera raw filter and adjusted the colors to get it how I wanted it. Once that was locked in, I then needed to adjust the background. So I went to the select tool and inverted it. So that then selects the background. And then again, I went to the camera raw filter. This time I wanted a dark background to make the red pop out in the Ferrari. So I bumped up the contrast in things to allow me to do that. I should mention that this way of editing is a kind of destructive process, which means that you can't always go back and change what you've done. In order to do that, you need to use the layers a lot more, uh, layer masks and things like that. I didn't in particular for this video, um, but I did it enough that I could change what I needed to. But sometimes you will just need to work that little bit quicker and this is a good way of doing that. So now that the car is popping out of the background, we need to get some of that detail back that we lost in the background. The lighting tubes are a nice detail that I lost when I was editing the background, so I want to regain those. To do this, I added a new layer and went back to my select tool. I started to draw around the lights quite carefully. When they're all selected, go to your history brush and go over the selection. This restores them to their former glory. There was one light which wasn't switched on in the actual shoot itself, so I wanted to change this in post. I simply added another layer again, went back to the main layer, selected the top light, and clicked copy, then returned to my new layer and pasted it in. Then it's a case of rotating it and fitting it into place. Some eraser tool might be ideal here just to get rid of some of the unwanted haze and things like that that you don't need. We also follow the same process for the Zulu badges. We go select around them. Then we colour them in a little bit. Select a nice colour that goes well. For me it was a sort of goldy colour here. Hit the paintbrush and bring down the opacity. If you don't bring the opacity down, you'll end up with a horrible effect which just completely blocks out everything underneath it. 
so you want to bring the opacity down so as you can see some detail underneath. To get the cool red glare underneath the grill of the Ferrari, I searched a stock site and looked for a red flare and then I put that in place in the picture. You're best putting the flare in a new layer. and then selecting the areas you don't want and then erasing them. This is almost a finished photo, but there are still some things I'd like to change. The Ferrari badge is one of the most recognisable, and we seem to have lost ours in some of the light reflections. Luckily for me, I took lots of pictures on the shoot, and I was able to steal one of the badges from another picture. When the new badge was selected from the other picture, I then copied that and pasted it into a new layer in our project. I then messed about with the perspective warp tool in order to get a nice angle on that badge so as it looked naturally in place. You can adjust the colour as well to make that yellow stand out against the red background. I did the same thing with the daytime running lights. They looked so much better in another picture, so I copied and pasted them and done the same process as the badge. From there, it's just a case of having a look over everything and making sure everything is to your liking before calling it a done deal. One thing I might want to do is bring back some of the detail in the check floor, so I blend it in with the history tool. And that is it, that is how you take a picture straight from your camera, make it 10 times better using Photoshop and a quick and easy editing process. This process used was obviously specific to this specific picture, however the processes and the principles are still the same and can be applied to any subject no matter what you're doing to get to the result quickly and easily. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and if you subscribe to the channel because that really helps me and I'll see you in the next one.